Guys, can you please tell me this? Why are they making so many bioweapons? Yes? Why? Why is NATO, the people, the world powers making so many weapons that could kill people? Remember, they was the ones that was funding um, this lab in Wuhan. At first they said it wasn't. First, the disease came from China, came from China. Then they, they admitted they was funding. Then uh, Fauci says, okay, but it wasn't gain of function. Then it was gain of function. They lie at every stage, at every step. Now there's a new bio disaster, a new bioweapon in Ukraine, of all places, a new bioweapon in Ukraine. The places where it's getting bombed, okay? That's going to be the next thing they see, that the bioweapon has escaped from the lab due to an explosion. And now people are sick, sick all over the world. There's a new pandemic. Like they told you it was going to come. I mean, Bill Gates said there's going to be another pandemic, right? Did he not? Well, take a look. Tell me what you Like think. today, there are more vaccines than there is demand for vaccines. Uh, and, you know, that wasn't true. And next time we should try and make it, instead of two years, we should make it more like six months. Uh, which certainly, uh, you know, some of the standardized platform approaches, including mRNA, would allow us to do that. So... You know, it, it took us a lot longer this time than, than it should have. Between Francis Collins, head of the U.S. National Institutes of Health, and Anthony Fauci, head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, and other so-called public health officials, emails that were strikingly at odds with their public statements at the time. Fauci knew from the beginning that it was likely this was one of ours, as they say. Unbeknownst to the American people, the US government was quietly using Eco Health Alliance, headed by a British subject, Peter Daszak, as a cutout to do US funded, in fact, CIA funded, gain of function research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, uh, which has the security protocols of the average dentist's office. The Chinese Politburo are the slickest liars on the planet, but even a stopped clock tells the truth twice a day. And Chairman Xi's odd insistence that COVID was an American thing turns out to be at least partly true. And according to the official numbers, six million people around the planet are dead because of it. That's tragic. But the government agencies responsible for this situation lied about it for the last two years, very angrily in the case of Fauci testifying in Congress, is evil. We're now going through the same old rigmarole with the belatedly coughed up Pfizer documents that show a 23% uh, systemic adverse effect and that the vaccine, once it's in your arm, likes to check out the rest of the neighborhood. Within 48 hours, 0.09% of it ends up in the ovaries uh, and over 16% in the liver. That's good news for Pfizer because in a year or three we'll have a whole bunch of new ailments requiring whole new lines of medicinal products. Uh, there is a gag from a British comedy show, Mitchell and Webb, that has become world famous. The two German officers in World War II sitting around chit-chatting when the penny drops. Are we the baddies? In the case of Washington and the COVID, the answer, at least partially, is yes. Chairman Xi is bad too. But it's baddies versus baddies, like the old Henry Kissinger jokes from the Iran-Iraq war. Now we have exactly the same thing in Ukraine, a quote agreement between the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ukrainian Ministry of Health, by which the Americans fund and the Ukrainians run biolabs. The apologists, the social media enforcers, the court eunuchs of the legacy media said just two weeks ago, oh, no, this is just some post-Soviet cleanup. Uh, the rest of it's a conspiracy theory. When the Bolsheviks went belly up, they left a lot of dodgy facilities planted hither and yon, and we've just been helping the Ukrainians keep the lid on things. No, 
Sorry, that's a government lie. And if you just want to keep amplifying it, you shouldn't be working in the media. You should be working as a parrot in a pet shop window. Actually, the Pentagon has been funding brand new, entirely post-Soviet bio labs in Ukraine. I mentioned before that the earliest photos in my family album are from Odessa, a branch of the family long gone from that town. But Ukraine-wise, uh, I follow Odessa with particular interest. The National Pulse, edited by Rahim Kassam, who was on this show last week, dug up this news story from Bioprep Watch in 2010. Quote, U.S. Senator Dick Lugar applauded the opening of the Interim Central Reference Laboratory in Odessa, Ukraine this week, announcing that it will be instrumental in researching dangerous pathogens used by bioterrorists. The Level 3 Biosafety Lab, which is the first built under the expanded authority of the Non-Lugar Cooperative Threat Reduction Program, will be used to study anthrax, tularemia and Q fever, as well as other dangerous pathogens. Unquote. Unquote. You know what anthrax is? There was a big scare just after 9-11. Tularemia. Tularemia is listed by the U.S. government as a biological warfare agent that in certain strains has 60% fatality rates. Q fever is ranked by the U.S. government as a Category B bioterrorism agent. Here's its selling point. You only need a single bacillus, just the one. No bacilli. We don't need the plural. Just one bacillus to achieve a 50% infection rate. That's the biggest bang for the buck of any bioterror agent on the planet. Ukraine, of course, is the poorest country in Europe with a gross national income significantly lower than Kosovo, Moldova, Albania or Belarus. As we've said before, it's also the most corrupt country in Europe. But apparently its global reputation for cutting-edge, state-of-the-art research into, quote, dangerous pathogens is such that U.S. taxpayers are funding Q-fever labs in Odessa. 